Okay, we're being asked to integrate this. So, solution. The first thing we'll do is complete the square here. So let's write this as 2x minus x squared. Let's write it backwards. So this can be negative x squared plus 2x. Now before you complete the square, this number in front of the x squared has to be a 1. So what we'll do is we'll factor out a negative 1. So this becomes x squared minus 2x, right? Because minus and minus give you a positive. So this is equal to negative parentheses x squared minus 2x plus 1. And how do you get the plus 1? Well, you take the coefficient of x, which is negative 2, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So you get negative 1 squared, which is 1. So that checks. All right, you can't just put a 1 here, right? So we really put a negative 1 here. So what we'll do is we'll add a 1, right, to get rid of it. So this ends up being 1 minus x squared minus 2x plus 1. And this is 1 minus, parentheses, x minus 1 quantity squared. Again, how do you get the negative 1? You just take the negative 2 and divide it by 2. All right, so now let's rewrite what we have. So we have the integral of x squared all divided by square root. And then this whole piece here, right, this entire piece became 1 minus 1 minus x squared. So it's 1 minus rather 1 minus x minus 1 squared dx. All right, let's keep going. Now we're going to make a substitution. So we're going to let x minus 1 be equal to the sine of theta. And then dx, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So this is cosine theta d theta. And then something neat happens. If we look at the term here under the square root, let's look at that. That's 1 minus x minus 1 squared. Well, this is 1 minus sine squared. And 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. Everybody knows that. All right, so now we have to make the substitution. So uh, let's do this carefully. So let's see. Uh, x here, well, what is x? Well, I guess we need to figure that out. x minus 1 is sine theta. So x minus 1 is sine theta. That means x will be sine theta plus 1. All right, so that's going to be our x. So we're going to get the integral of sine theta plus 1 squared. So that takes care of the x. What about the dx? Well, dx is right here. It's cosine theta d theta. So this is cosine theta d theta. And then this is all over our, our giant uh, square root. Uh, but we worked out what was under the square root, right? It's right here. And that's equal to cosine squared cosine squared theta. All right, let's keep going. So we can assume that cosine is positive so that when we take the square root of cosine squared, we just get cosine. So this is cosine theta d theta. And all of this here is cosine theta. These cancel, so we end up with sine theta plus 1 quantity squared d theta. All right, let's keep going. You can FOIL this out, or you can uh, use a formula, rather multiply it out, or use a formula. This is sine squared plus 2 sine theta plus 1 d theta. Let's keep going. Uh, sine squared, there's an identity for this. I'll write it way over here. So this is going to be 1 minus cosine 2 theta all over 2 plus 2 sine theta plus 1, parentheses, d theta. Uh, let's keep going. This is 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta plus 2 sine theta plus 1. And all of this in parentheses, d theta. It's a long problem, uh, but it's good for you. It's good to do problems like this. Uh, uh, it builds character. So 1 half plus 1 is uh, 3 halves. And here we have minus 1 half cosine 2 theta plus 2 sine theta. We're finally at a point where we can integrate. So um, at this point, what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Well, that's sine. So this will be 3 halves theta minus 1 over 4 sine 2 theta. Now, the reason I get a 4 here is because when you integrate cosine 2 theta d theta, um, it's just negative sine 2 theta, 
and the shortcut is just take this number here, which is a 2, and just divide by 2. So we divided by 2, we already had a 2 here, so 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, minus 2 cosine theta plus c. Alright, we're at the point where we, or we're almost at the point where we draw a triangle. Now if we draw a triangle here, you see we have a 2 theta here, so that's, that's problematic. So what we'll do is we'll use an identity, sine 2 theta, it's actually equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta, so this ends up being 3 halves theta minus 1 fourth, uh, 2 sine theta, cosine theta, minus 2 cosine theta, plus c. These cancel, so you get 3 halves theta, minus 1 half sine theta, cosine theta, minus 2 cosine theta, plus c. Wow, this is a really long problem. All right, so now we need to figure out uh, what theta is. So recall that x minus 1 was sine theta. So think of this as x minus 1 over 1 and draw a triangle. So remember the Sokotoa. So this is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite here is x minus 1. The hypotenuse is 1. And if you use the Pythagorean theorem, if you call this b, you get 1 squared is x minus 1 squared plus b squared. So b is the square root of 1 minus x minus 1 squared. So this is the square root of 1 minus x minus 1 squared. So now we can clean this up. So 3 halves theta. Well, sine of theta is equal to x minus 1. So sine takes theta and gives you x minus 1. So the arc sine will take x minus 1 and give you back theta. So this is going to be arc sine x minus 1 minus 1 half. Now sine theta, well that's x minus 1, we figured that out. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is the adjacent right here. So it'll be square root 1 minus x minus 1 squared over hypotenuse, which is 1, so I won't write it. Minus 2, and again cosine again, we know what that is. That's the square root of 1 minus x minus 1 squared plus c. So that's the final answer right there. Um, it was kind of a rushed video, but I was in a hurry, but I hope this helps uh, somebody out there.